ready? Okay. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, too. Welcome to Heaven's Kitchen, brought to you by Victory Kids of Red Deer. Okay, guys, we are going to have so much fun this summer. Every Sunday is going to be a new episode where you learn how to cook with me, Chef Leanne. Isn't that awesome? We are going to have so much fun. We're going to listen to Bible stories. We're going to memorize scripture. We're going to sing. Oh, yes, we are going to sing. We are going to dance. You know, it's going to be at your house, so no one will see you. It's fine. We're going to have a lot of fun, and I want you to join me. Like Riley said, there is only one way to actually get the fruits of the Spirit in your life, and that is through a relationship with Jesus Christ, and we want to help you do that. So please join us all summer long for Heaven's Kitchen. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, it's easy to be selfish. Back to Heaven's Kitchen. Chef Leanne here. We're talking about self-control. Uh-oh. Yep. It's that word, self-control. Oh no. We have to control ourselves. Yeah, we have to control ourselves when we eat ice cream. We have to control ourselves when our brother or sister is bugging us. We have to control ourselves when people are being mean to us. Yeah. God gives us these things to do. Not because he just likes bossing us around, but because it benefits us. When we have self-control, people can trust us. They can trust us to love them even when they're behaving terribly. And it's hard. It's not an easy thing. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Okay, our verse today comes from Proverbs. 25 verse 27, 28, sorry. A person without self-control is like a city whose walls are broken through. Now, what does that mean, really? Okay, imagine a city that has walls all around it. Okay, that used to be the way things were back in Old Testament times. To protect a city, the walls were erected outside, so that would protect the inhabitants of the city from marauders, people that uh, wanted to come in and hurt them or rob them. There was a lot of war going on, so the walls would protect that city. Now, if your walls are broken, there's no protection there, is it? It's just wide open. So that means anybody or anything can come through those walls and pollute your city, pollute your mind, pollute your heart. Okay, now, a city whose walls are broken through that's kind of a picture that we can imagine for our hearts, okay? If we don't protect our heart with walls from things in the world, people hurting us, saying mean things to us, calling us names, things like that. If we don't protect our hearts and we don't have self-control, then anything and everything can get into our heart and poison us and hurt us and the relationships we have with other people. So we don't want to be a city whose walls are broken down. We want to be a city on a hill so we can shine God's light into other people's lives. Okay, let's say this verse together. A person without self-control is like a city whose walls are broken through. Protect your heart, guys. Okay? You don't need to know all the things, and you don't need to have all the things, and you don't need to eat all of the things. Even though we're going to have some ice cream pie, 
guess what? We can share that with other people, just like we can share the love of Christ with other people. We can't keep it all for ourselves. He gave it to us so we could share. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to Vacation Bible School. Today, I believe we're going to be talking about self-control. Wow. Super important. I've got tons of that. I'd like to say that, but yeah, I'd be lying. And yeah. God tells us not to lie, so. Anyways, this takes us into the Old Testament. We're going to be reading uh, 1 Samuel. So that's like way back there. Chapter 24. And it's going to start at verse 1, and uh, it's going to go down to... It'll go down here a little ways, we'll find out. Alright, so it starts off. Saul returned from chasing the Philistines. Then he was told, David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 of his best soldiers from the whole nation of Israel, and he started out to look for David and his men, because they weren't getting along and David was hiding. Uh, so he planned to look near the rocky cliffs of the wild goats. Uh, so he came to some sheep pens along the way, and there was a cave there. So Saul went into the, to the cave to use the bathroom. David and his men were hiding way back in the cave. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty good coincidence that he was back there. Uh, so let's see here. And then it tells us that when Saul went... David, David's men said, This is the day that the Lord told you about. He said to you, I will hand over your enemy to you, and then you can deal with him as you want to. So David came up close to Saul without being seen, cut off a little corner of the robe. So later, David felt sorry that he had even done that. He, didn't, he felt bad for cutting off a corner of Saul's robe. So he said to his men, May the Lord keep me from doing a thing like that again to my master. He is the Lord's anointed king. So I promise that I will never lay my hand on him again. On the Lord's, because uh, the Lord has anointed him, David said. So that, that to correct his men. So he wanted them to know that they should never suggest harming the king. Because... God put him in place. So he didn't allow them to attack Saul. So Saul left the cave and went on his way. And then David went out of the cave. He called out to Saul, Hey, King Saul, my master. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down. And he laid flat with his face toward the ground. And he said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say David is trying to harm you? This is the day you have seen with your own eyes have the Lord handed you over to me. In that cave, and some of my men begged me to kill you, but I didn't, he said. I will never lay my hand on my master, because he is the Lord's anointed king. Look, my father, look the piece of your whole robe in my hand. I cut, it off the, I cut off the corner of your robe, but I didn't kill you. See, there is nothing in my hand that shows I am guilty of doing anything wrong. I haven't turned against you. I haven't done anything to harm you, but you're hunting me down and you want to kill me. May the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord pay you back because of the wrong things you have done to me. But I won't do anything to hurt you. People say evil acts come from those who do evil, so I won't do anything to hurt you. Wow. That's pretty cool. Like, you know what? King Saul was after David. He was hunting him. He's going to kill him. And so David had the exact opportunity to do the same thing. And then he could end all this running around and hiding in caves. And he didn't. He had self-control. God. So told him. Absolutely. Yep. So now that brings us into the question. I think we just kind of answered. Why did David decide not to hurt Saul? Saul was God's anointed king, and God told David, don't hurt him, I'll give it to you, you can be the king, just hang on, have a little self-control, right? So now, what would it be you, or you, or myself, done in that situation? I know what I'd like to think I'd do, but what would you do in that situation? Listen to God. Absolutely. Always. Always. Fair enough. Is a big thing, right? All your friends are doing something that you know is wrong. 
have some self-control and you show them that you know that's wrong and you don't follow along, right? So now, like, uh, how do you think they feel? Well, probably a little sweaty, a little nervous, a little, a little nervous, eh? Because it's literally being split in two, and he's fighting And it says, like, he had the chance to do it, and he went and cut the claw the corner of the robe off, and he felt bad that he did that. Like, he didn't even hurt, he didn't even hurt the guy, he just cut his cloth. Like, you know, if I just ripped your apron here, yeah. But, I, but he felt really bad that he even did that. Yeah. So, like, but now, how do you think Saul felt? Especially when he found out. What? Really? <coughs> Excuse me. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, he found out some guy just could have killed you, and he didn't. Because God told him not to. But, you like, you were this close, man. Like that. Oh. oh, yeah. And, you know, like, yeah, he, he just probably felt relieved, too, like you said. Because, I mean, he's this close to darn. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, now, so that just kind of leads us in. Why is it helpful to be self-control and, and uh, to have self-control and keep in charge, <clears throat> excuse me, of the way that we act. Well, I mean, having self-control of the way we act around others means that we could prevent ourselves from saying something or doing something that isn't right with God or doesn't line up with the way God wants us to live for Him and in, in His glory. Yeah, self-control is big. Like, you got to got to make sure that that you don't go too far. And self-control in God can help you with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, and again, like we said, if all your friends are doing something, like you're going to feel that pressure that you should probably do it too. But that self-control, you know, you won't upset God, right? Like we all do things sometimes that, you, you know, he doesn't really like. But we have some self-control and we can fight that, that temptation. Then, well, then we won't disappoint God. Which is yes. huge. I really don't like disappointing God. No, no. Of not. So uh, now, how do you, how do you, uh, how do we find help to do this with our self control? How do you find help with your self control? In the Bible. Yes, and prayer. Absolutely. Good job, guys. I know you said that because we talk about it every week. So I know you knew that. And so the very last question we got here, super important. How is God self-control? Ooh, ooh. That's a doozy. God is self-control. His compassion, goodness, and kindness for us. All of this brings God self-control in the way He deals with His children. I agree, right? Like, you know, it's uh, I know I've done things before in the past that probably didn't make God that happy. And again, you know what? He could have struck me with lightning if he wanted to. <laughs> Gone. See you later, Teacher Colin. But he didn't. He had self-control. And he gave me that second, third, 28th chance to do things right, to do things his way. So super self-control, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, you know, that was a fantastic q and I'm glad we got yeah, to learn about perfect. some self-control. Super important. So now I'm going to try to control myself. I, I gotta get a little excited. I can't help it. All right. Let's do some crafts. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. All right. Take a little break. Craft time. Craft time. Woo! Ew. Yeah. All right. All right. So we're gonna do some craft time. Woo! We're gonna do some crafts with a CD and some fancy colored markers. We're gonna stick the ball on the bottom of your CD because you're gonna have colored the top shiny part of your CD. Ooh. You're going to take sticky the tack and you're going to sticky the tack onto your marble and you're going to push the lid on top so that it stays in place and when you do it's going to spin around on the table reflecting all the beautiful colors and this shows self-control through doing something else like not hitting your brother or maybe the fact that we have self-control and the fact that this doesn't move until we want it to move. Okay, here we go. So, we're going to pray for some self-control. 
And that's a big one to pray for. I'm sure we're going to have a nice big prayer. What do you think, Paul? I think that's uh, probably a very good idea. I know I could always use some self-control. I definitely could earlier. Uh, I was totally being sarcastic about it. I have no self-control at all. So let's get into it. We'll cross our hands and bow our eyes and we'll just pray. Absolutely. Thank you, God, for the amount of self-control you you give to us and the ability to to keep from hurting others or keep from doing things that we don't want to do uh, physically and verbally and and I just I thank you for the self-control you give us Lord and I just thank you for for the self-control you have with us Lord because you could be such a grumpy parent if you wanted to be Lord but you're not you're not you're a humble forgiving father full of self-control just love you for that Lord you know what, God? I don't have too much to add to teach you, Ken. He pretty much nailed it. So I just, again, thank you for, for everything, God. And, and again, the self-control that you use on us. And Father, I pray that you would help us use, use the self-control that you've given us. And the self-control that we find by following Jesus, Lord. That, you know what? This is the last one. So God, we just thank you for everything, Lord. The peace and the patience and the kindness and the goodness and the faith. Everything. All the fruits yes. that you give us, Lord, and especially that self-control, God. Just thank you so much for that. And uh, and help us use your gifts that you've given us. And we just thank you, Father, and we pray this in Jesus' amazing name, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, boys and girls, you have a wonderful have a summer. One. Yeah, it was good seeing you. Have fun. Bye. Woo! All right. Got the fruits. Time. It is time to fill our pie. Now, I've chosen uh, no sugar added ice cream, but of course, you can use whatever flavor ice cream you use, you want. Um, you can have lactose in it if that's not a problem in your house, but there is options out there for those that do. And my husband is very happy about that. Uh, I chose to put some strawberries and raspberries in our pie today, and I made this, um, Saskatoon berry uh, drizzle that I'm gonna put in there in layers and kind of swirl it around so it looks really cool but also then it will taste really good so what I'm gonna do first is put a layer of ice cream uh, that we kind of let sit out for a little bit just so it's a little softer so it's easier to work with now, yeah, you can do anything with this, okay? You can add chocolate sauce. You can add caramel sauce. You can do whatever. Recipes are not like God's word, <laughs> okay? You can go your own way with that. You can go your own way with recipes, and they will still turn out, for the most part, really well. Uh, it doesn't happen the same way when we you know, kind of stray off of God's plan. So keep that in mind. So we're talking about self-control and yeah, ice cream is a hard one for me to resist. So it will be a struggle. The struggle is real, but so is God. So that's awesome. He can help us. All right, so now I'm gonna just Put a few raspberries in there because I like little chunks of fruit. They'll look really pretty and colorful inside when you have all these lovely fruity bits. And get all of those in there. And I'm going to just chop up some strawberries. Um, I don't like too big of a piece, so I'm going to cut them fairly small. And remember, always keep track of your hands when you are slicing. Okay, if you don't know where your other hand is, figure that out first, then do the chopping. And it's always best to not be in a hurry when you are slicing things. So just take your time. Trust me, it will be worth the wait. Okay, or just do another one. So I like lots of berries in there. Okay, remember you got to pre-wash your fruit 
and your hands. Gotta wash your hands. It's just an important thing to do. Okay, so that's gonna be like the little surprise inside. I'm gonna add some of my, whoopsie. <laughs> I tightened the lid on that very well. But it didn't spill purple stuff all over everything, so I'll take that as a win. Okay, so I just did um, some Saskatoon berries that we had frozen in our freezer, and you can use any fruit. There's mangoes, strawberries, pineapple would be good, whatever. We're just gonna kinda droop, bloop, whatever. Plop <laughs> some sauce in there. Uh, obviously I'm not gonna use this whole thing. I might drink it later. It's just Saskatoon juice. Okay, so we're just gonna let that go there. Now what I like to do when I put sauce in is kind of swirl it. Okay, so then it leaves cool little streaks of flavor throughout. So it'll look really cool, but then you'll get all the fruity goodness throughout the whole pie. Somebody just knocked on the door, I think. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now what we're going to do is put the rest of our ice cream on top. Just kind of put it down on there. And if you end up swirling stuff into the top, no big deal. It's going to taste amazing no matter what you're doing with this. You add chocolate and you do the the Oreo cookie crumbs, that would be pretty delicious. You could add some pecans in there if you like that kind of thing, or chocolate chips, anything. It is your creation, okay? Don't be afraid to experiment and do different things in the kitchen just because you've never done it before. You know, there's millions of recipes out there that you can find and try out. And cooking is just another way that you can be creative, but also a way that you can serve your friends and family by making them food and feeding them. I don't know anyone that doesn't appreciate a meal or something food-wise made for them. As long as they're not allergic to it. But still, I think most people just appreciate the fact that someone thought of them and made something for them. Okay, see, I got some cute little purple swirls in there. That's going to be delicious. Okay, now we have to let this freeze up. So we're going to pop that into the freezer. So it probably because we let the ice cream um, get so soft you would want to have that in the freezer for about an hour and then you can serve it up when you know you need to stay hey, hey, hey. it's easy to quit instead of staying till the